Roxo Media House. They hand it off again. Miller running room across the 30. Bounces an outside 35, 40. There he goes. Down the sideline. 30, 20, 10. Kendra, 75-yard score. Savion Williams freezing. And the Horn Frogs. You are in the State of the Frogs. Presented by the Railhead Smokehouse with TCU head coach Sonny Dykes. And also brought to you by Hub Fort Worth, Old Trapper Beef Turkey, Texas Health Resources, and by Cadillac. Now with the coach, here is the voice of the Frogs, Brian Estridge. State of the Frogs starts right now here live in Coach Dykes' office as the Horn Frogs coming off that win 17-10 to over the Texas Longhorns. The head coach is alongside, just like everyone thought, right? 17-10, defensive battle, that's what it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, I think all the pundits thought it was going to be 3 nothing <laughs> at halftime, just like it was. Uh, it's just, you know, it's the way college football goes sometimes. Really proud of our defense. Yes. I mean, those guys played lights out. It was fun to... Fun to watch them, played fast, and really played a lot of confidence. And you can see they're starting to really understand Coach Gillespie's scheme and get comfortable with it. I think we've really, the last three or four games, really starting to kind of come into our own defensively. So, you know, it was uh, it was a tough sledding on offense, but but we uh, you know we were able to, to put together enough to, to win the game. You would sort of challenge your team to your defense, especially to give you a complete game. And I thought Saturday was really close to that. It was, yeah. Guys played lights out, um, you know. We felt like we were really close. I mean, we felt like we had uh, continued to get better and better really every week and uh, almost possession to possession. Just you could see guys starting to trigger a little faster, starting to play a little tighter on coverage. Um, you know, and so much of our success you can attribute to our corners. You know, Trey has just played so well and Josh has played so well, and that's allowed us to do so many different things. You know, when you can really lock down two outside players and it really allows you to do a bunch of different things defensively and they're playing – they're playing so well with so much confidence. And so it's been fun to watch the, watch the group evolve a little bit. You know, Dylan Horton continues to play uh, really, really well. I mean, he's starting to, to come into his own. And, and uh, you know, everybody played hard. Shad Banks was a real important part of it. You know, he got the start this week. Uh, and it was um, – his performance was outstanding. I mean, he played uh, really fast, played physical, um, you know, really ran around and made a bunch of plays. And, and – you know, it was great to get D back to start the second half, and, and Shad just did such a fantastic job filling in for him. You know, yeah, I talked to you after the game, and you, I told you that I was a little worried about not having D in that first half, and you're right. Shad stepped up. I thought Johnny Hodges had a great game, too. He was all over the field. He did. Yeah, he did. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's funny. Our linebackers were pretty banged up after the Kansas State game, and we were just kind of holding on against West Virginia and got a little bit more healthy last week against Texas Tech. And, you know, to me, they were all healthy again this week and, and played like they're capable of play, playing. You know, Jamoy had a, a big game as well, really played physical. And, you know, those guys were going to have to play well to, to stop Texas running game. And, and Bijan and, um, you know, those backs are really good players. And, and so, you know, the way we play defense, those linebackers have got to make plays, and they did. And like you said, Johnny continues to play really, really well. And, um, you know, it's just a, a real calming presence for the guys. You know, he's played a lot of football. and. Uh, it's a fun group, man. Those guys just keep getting better and better. We looked at some of the numbers after the game and what you were able to do to hold them to 28 yards rushing, minus five in the second half. That's pretty impressive, Coach. It is, and especially, again, when you're playing against two of the best running backs in college football. I mean, that's a big offensive line that Texas has. They're a little young in some spots, but they're still big and they're physical. Um, and those backs have been able to, to make people miss and, and break tackles and you know, we just ran to the ball so well. There were a couple of times the first guy there didn't get him down, but then we had great pursuit and we were able to gang tackle, and, and that's what you have to do against special running backs. Worth noting, here's a couple of notes from that ball game. The Frog defense holds Texas, the Longhorns, to season lows virtually every offensive category. You hold them to 10 points. Seven of those were scored without the defense on the field. Yeah. Right? All right, so yeah. you get that. You got 28 yards rushing. Their previous low was 79. That was to Alabama. Uh, they had 199 total yards. You held them under 200 yards that Previous low was about 363 to Iowa State. They had 14 first downs. Previous low was 20 against Texas Tech. And they were one of 13 on third down in that ball game. Yeah, I thought I thought Joe did a great job, you know, keeping them off balance, yeah. mixing it up. You know, we blitzed some, we dropped eight some. Um, you know, I think that, that, you know, we saw maybe that the quarterback wasn't completely comfortable. And I think Joe did a really good job of creating enough pressure by bringing one, maybe two. Uh, but at the same time, allowing us to get to cover the guys. And as I said earlier, I mean, our corners just played so well in those 50-50 balls and competed so hard. 
Um, it was just, man, it was fun to watch. It really was. Those guys were, were really, really competing hard. You talked about going into that game and the importance of tackling. Yep. And, and it was your best tackling game of the year. They did. They have two NFL running backs, let's face it. No they doubt. did not have a run longer than 10 yards all night. Yeah, yeah. And, and as I said earlier, it wasn't always the first guy that got them down. We did a lot. But but when, uh, when, when they made somebody miss or ran through a tackle, then, you know, the cavalry was coming. Yeah. And so, you know, the guys really ran to the ball well. That's the trademarks of a good defense. And, and – you know, it's so funny. I talked to Joe earlier in the week, and, you know, those players came to him and said, look, we want to do pursuit drill. So we did pursuit drill on Tuesday and Wednesday, and I think for them it was uh, – that's hard on those guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they got to they gotta run, and it's a hard way to start practice, and they wanted to do it. And I think, you know, that shows you their mentality, and I think it set the tone for the week in a lot of ways. So, you know, the guys are really taking ownership in, their, in, their, in our program and uh, in their performance and their preparation. So it's fun to see. And – you know, we just continue to get more and more confident every week. Well, we got to talk about the offense a little bit too. Heroic effort from Quentin Johnson, I thought out there. Yeah, yeah. Quentin came in and played really well. I mean, he really didn't practice much at all during the week, um, and so it was really impressive for him to go out there and perform like he did. You know, typically when guys don't practice, they don't they don't play well. I mean, it's just part of part of football, and it's part of football at the very highest level. I mean, players in the NFL that don't practice typically don't play well, and Quentin was able to go out there, gut it out make some big plays for us you know converted a big third down early in the game where we missed the field goal uh, or got the field goal blocked um, and just made a, a mistake you know off the wing again mm -hmm. something we haven't done all year but um, but then you know obviously made a big catch on the touchdown uh, made an, another big catch on the third down conversion which allowed us to run the, the the clock out and so you know when the game is on the line Quentin made plays and, and that's what you expect from a, a big-time player uh, also a big-time player Kendra Miller I mean uh, I, I love the question that he got post game you're the best running back in the in the big 12 and his answer was simple yes yeah I mean look <laughs> you turn the game on you watch the game and yeah. those two guys head-to-head -head, and you know Kendra's stats uh, compare very favorably to Bijan's and, and so you know uh, what more can you say? I mean, I, I tend to agree with them. You yeah. know, it's my job is to talk about the opponent a lot and how good they are. And yeah. I have a lot of respect for Bijan. But I can tell you this, uh, I wouldn't trade Kendra and Miller for anybody. <laughs> the thing that stood out to me on the 75 yard, and we're going to see it here in a second, was the fact that he pulled away yeah. from Texas defensive backs in that run. He did, yeah. Now, you can see his speed there. And, yeah. you know, it was great. Uh, you know, Savion got a block on the edge. Yes. So it was really important. Kind of got in the way just enough where those guys had to stop and restart their feet. And, once Kendra hit that edge, man, he was gone. And he does – he's got a lot more speed than people think he does. And, and I, I'm excited that he's – you know, people are starting to take note of how good he is and, and how capable he is as a running back. And, you know, I truly believe he's one of the best in the country. One other note, the tough guy of the award uh, – of the week award might need to go to Jordy Sandy, the punter. He got he got hit every time. It yeah, Jordy, like. Jordy got banged up, man, yeah. and, and he never blinked. No. I mean, I, like you said, I think Jordy – was one of the most valuable players in the game. You know, we had a – they got us a couple times on some protection stuff, and, and you know, they were going to come hard. That's what they do. And, you know, the first time he got hit, I thought that was at least running into the kicker. And the second time I thought was roughing, and obviously the third time was roughing. And, um, you know, it, those were big plays in the game. You know, for us to get that first down, and we went down and scored right there to separate from Texas, go up two scores. You know, to me, when you sat down and you said, what was the most important play of the game, it was Jordy getting that punt off and uh, the 15-yard penalty that came as a result of it. And – you know, we really didn't block it the way we were supposed to on the back end, and, and really that was Jordy doing it himself and getting it off, and obviously a huge play. All right, 104,000 in Austin on Saturday night for this one. Here's some of the highlights from this one. Coach, this was a back-and-forth game. You had pretty good field position for a lot of it, unable to capitalize often, but you did get this 34-yard field goal from Griffin Kale in the first half. Yeah, we did. We had we played basically on Texas' end of the field the whole first quarter. Um, you know, and, and – you could kind of see the way the game was going. You know, typically we might go for some of those situations, yeah. I mean, especially at their 35-yard line. But, you know, we just felt like it was a fourth and long, and we felt like field position was going to be really important. I mean, the flow of the game and the way the game was revealed to us dictated that it was made sense to punt. Jordy punted them down to the one. And then from that point, we were punting back and forth, and we were on that end of the field uh, the whole time and weren't really able to capitalize like we should have. Had too many negative plays that got us behind the sticks a little bit. But, um, but you know, Griffin, Griffin steps in, kicks this big field goal, and we're up 3 nothing, and, you know, that carried us to halftime. There was some debate, at least we were having, on, do, you, do you kick it here, do you go for it? And, and one of the reasons you kick it there is to get Griffin back on line, too. And, and he was able to make it and get back in line. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think, again, you know, just having a lot of confidence yeah. in him is, is why we kicked it. But, um, you know, 
there was a little bit of debate going on, but at that point of the game, you know, points were of the premium, mm -hmm. and we just felt like that that it was going to be a different game maybe than everybody anticipated, and um, you know. Was what, it was one of those games where truly, you know, we have that book on analytics. Yeah. That book was closed about midway through the first <laughs> quarter. And at that point, it was, hey, look, let's figure out what we got to do to win this game. All right, 3 nothing at the half. You come out in the second half. And this is when Kendra rips off the 75-yard run. You, you, this drive started, what, at the – Seven yard line, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a four play, ninety three yard drive. For yeah, him. yeah, and obviously uh, got a first down, and then Kendra did a fantastic job of, of making this run. And yeah. you know, you can see the speed once he hit the edge. And you know, like I said, Savion just got enough of a block, really kind of blocked two guys almost. And and Kendra, Kendra was just able to outrun everybody. You know, this goes back to what what you've talked about week after week after week, and that's the patience of Garrett Riley. Never got away from the run game in this one. Yeah, yeah, and it was hard to do. I mean, that was hard to do, especially when, you know, you're supposed to be this high-scoring offense and supposed to put up all these big numbers. And, you know, to me, every game is different, and every game is its own unique um, unique thing. And you've got to figure out how to adjust to allow yourself to win the game. And for us, you know, the big key was don't turn the ball over. Let's, let's continue to punt uh, and play great defense. And really, that was the, that was the formula. And we figured that out about midway through the first, and I think it, it allowed us to win the game. All right, Texas gets on the board with this 22-yard field goal. So it's 10-3 at this point. And then this pass to Quentin Johnson, I'll be honest with you, Coach, I kind of froze. Uh, when, when the safeties both walked up for Texas and Quentin's wide open, I was thinking, did the whistle blow? It, it yeah. was kind of crazy. It was weird, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think what happened was, you know, they're in quarters coverage and, and the safeties and the corner sinking and the safety sinking and there was an out cut. And then what has to happen typically is the, they have to decide is the safety going to play the out, right. is the corner going to play the out. And I think they just miscommunicated. Nobody played the post. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think it surprised everybody, including Max, including Quentin. Yeah. Quentin goes up to catch the ball and realizes there's no one around him. <laughs> uh, and so, obviously, that was a, a big play in the game, you know, allowed us to go up two scores. And, um, and, and that's big. In a game like that, that two score thing is huge. We were hoping. At some point, we could get down, maybe kick a field goal to go up three, uh, three scores, which would have obviously been huge for us, but couldn't quite ever get in field goal range. All right, 17 to three at this point, uh, and then late in the game, 425 to go. You're trying to put it away, uh, and all I could think about was Joe Pasarczyk. You remember that play with the Giants and the Eagles? Yep, I do. Uh, back in the day, and I, and I know that had to be running through your mind too. Yeah. This is just a tough exchange right here, right? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of one of those deals where uh, Max is reading it, puts in Kendra's belly, Kendra takes the ball, Max kind of pulls it out probably. Um, you know, just one of those things that happens, never never very happens very often, right. I mean, certainly for us, and the ball goes on the ground, Max does a great job of covering it and just gets away from him, they pick it up and go score. So, you know, at that point, 17-10, and, and all of a sudden, you know, the crowd's back in it, here we go, and they kick off to us, and, you know, we, we grinded it out. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, and Kendra, and, Kendra running the ball. Uh, Amari, Amari, uh, Amari really, really ran hard. Almost scored it out twice, two different occasions, which certainly would have been nice. But, um, but man, you know that's what you have to do if you want to win uh, big games and, and big environments like that. Then you've got to be able to close the game out at the end of the game and and run the ball again when everybody in the stadium knows you're going to run it. And we were able to do that. Yeah, no panic, no 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 flinch. No, that's line. a great thing about yeah. about it. After Max fumbled, you know, he came over to the sideline, and there were about ten people waiting in line to go, "Hey, no big deal, man. Yeah. We're good. Don't yeah. worry about it." You know, and and Max never blinked. You know, I could tell he was disappointed and, and surprised that it happened, like we all were. But you know, he moved on quickly and and went out and did his job and and helped us win the game. All right, Horn Frogs do post that victory, tenth of the year now for TCU against the Texas Longhorns. Coach will be back a little bit later on. We'll start to break down the next opponent for the Horn Frogs, the Baylor Bears. We'll do that after we take care of our what's your beef question. It happens next when State of the Frogs continues after this timeout. The Hub Fort Worth family is a passionate, energetic team of insurance professionals that have the same common goal in mind, helping businesses and individuals protect their health, property, and financial well-being. Their objective is to maximize the options available to businesses, families, and individuals while helping you make the choices that suit each unique situation and challenge. Their clients look to them for guidance in navigating the cumbersome world of insurance and investments. Their experience and personal relationships combined with their creativity enables them to craft solutions that fit your specific circumstances. Their guiding principle is, don't tell me how much you know, just show me how much you care. Since their founding in 1966, they've enhanced their offerings to include a comprehensive range of services, including employee benefits, property and casualty, and personal lines insurance. 
Follow them and learn more on their social media pages. You can find them on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Hub Fort Worth. Old Trapper Beats. Oh, One cool. upping. <laughs> I'm a big Old Trapper fan. <laughs> Not bigger than me. I love Old Trapper. I love how tender it is. Don't forget the wood smoke flavor. What about the clear bag? That shows you exactly what you're getting. Savory beef. Quality ingredients. I'm their biggest I'm fan. I'm their biggest I'm fan. Their Old Trapper, what's your beef? The official beef jerky of the Big 12. Will you sign my bag and my tattoo? For exclusive interviews and content on TC Recruits, subscribe now at frogstoday.com. Any sport, anytime. It's your source for all things TCU. Only on frogstoday.com. Welcome back into State of the Frogs with the head coach of the Horned Frogs, Sonny Dykes. Time for our old trapper, what's your beef question of the week. And let's take a listen in here and see what we got, coach. Maggie Hale. Now, Maggie, do you have a question for Sonny Dykes? Sonny, what's your favorite uniform that the boys wear? All right, Maggie wants to know what your favorite uniform is. Now, you're kind of a traditionalist, I think, when it comes to uniforms, yeah, aren't you? I am. I am. I, I kind of, uh, I'm old school uh, when it comes to uniforms. I don't really know why. I'm not old school on very many things. Right. But I like people to be able to turn the game on and know who's playing. You know, that drives me crazy when I turn on a college football game and I don't know who the teams are. So having said that, I would, I'd probably go with the, with the purple top and the white pants. I think that's a classic look. Um, I do like the all black when we wear all black at home, you know, the, one, the blackout game once a year. And then, you know, I don't know what you call it. The, I guess they call it the, the frog blood yes. uh, anthracite right, uniforms, right. I guess. It, they're, they're cool too. Yeah. They're not my favorite, but, I, but, but the players like them and yep. the fans like them and recruits like them. So... The good thing is we got great colors. We yes. can do a bunch of cool stuff with it. Uh, anytime black's one of your colors, that allows you to, to really have some fun. So love our uniforms, and uh, but, but I'd have to say probably just the, the traditional purple. Yeah, th this uh, the color scheme here at TCU lends itself to putting together pretty good colors. It does. Yeah, there, yeah. Like there's I some said, places that don't. Yeah, no doubt. No, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of places that don't, and we're fortunate to have a great color scheme. I love it. All right, Coach is going to be back a little bit later on. Uh, he's going to start to break down the matchup with Baylor coming up with State of the Frogs continues. But first, it's our one-play breakdown with Coach David Bowden. We'll do that next after this timeout. Old Trapper beats. Oh, one cool. upping. <laughs> I'm a big Old Trapper fan. <laughs> Not bigger than me. I love Old Trapper. I love how tender it is. Don't forget the wood smoke flavor. What about the clear bag? That shows you exactly what you're getting. Savory beef. Quality ingredients. I'm their biggest I'm fan. I'm their biggest I'm fan. Their... Old Trapper, what's your beef? The official beef jerky of the Big 12. Will you sign my bag and my tattoo? Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Texas based Happy Water offers the best tasting sugar free kids' drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H A P I drinks.com. Live happy, be happy, drink happy. Welcome back into State of the Frogs. Time for our one play breakdown. We go back to the Flying Tea Club Studios where Coach David Bowden is standing by. We could have picked a lot of plays in this one, Coach. But I'm going to give you kind of an odd one I want you to break down that stood out for me. It was in the fourth quarter. Texas has the football uh, with about 9.45 to go in the fourth. It's a typical drop back pass here. Uh, but there's a pretty good job defensively by OBAs. The thing that stood out to me was – you get deep in the red zone like this where Texas was, and you, you tend to see, uh, well, for a lot of folks, man coverage here. What did we see out of TCU's defense in this one? Yeah, Brian, so normally they come out, you know, we'll get man coverage uh, along the goal line, as you said, 
and they'll kind of lock it up, man, and people run those rub routes, pick routes. Of course, you know, the defense uh, calls it offensive pass interference. But really here, they, they came out in seven across. And so as you can see, here's your seven players here, and they all fit in. Okay, so those are your seven across. And then they could fit in, in a two-high arrangement, which is TCU does that here, meaning the two safeties fit into their zone. Okay, or you do it in one high arrangement. If they had one safety in the middle, then the linebackers would just fit those other spots. But you're basically building a fence and seven across in zone. So typically, you know, you get teams that would run the football against this, but it's, it's again, it's fourth and ten, uh, fourth and goal from the ten yard line. So they do a really nice job here. They go in a, a, a kind of a switch vertical concept with a wheel from here. And, and uh, Thomason, Hodges Thomason stays in this zone because they look here first and then come back inside. And as you said, Obiazar Ob Ob makes a great play over the top, but they do have some guys underneath as well. Okay, so when TCU is doing that defensively, what do teams normally run in this situation? And, and give me some sense as to how the linebackers played a role in this one. Yeah, Brian, so typically, as I said, they would run the football against, uh, you know, seven across. But again, being fourth down, they end up, um, you know, they're going to throw the ball. But what you do against seven across, if you are going to throw the football, is go some kind of high-low concept normally, meaning one run, one run uh, guy along the, the, end, the uh, goal line, about two yards deep, and then someone along the back of the end zone. And then if you have one guy in that zone, he's got to either jump this or hang back, and either way you have him in a bind. But, I, you know, clearly Texas didn't know they were coming out in that as well. So you take, take a look at the linebackers. You mentioned the guys underneath. Shadrach Banks does a really nice job. As you see on the film, he'll open up his hips and, and see this bender in here. And then as soon as he, he eyeballs it, he takes this hip, opens it back up. And so it makes a really tough throw for Quinn Ewers. Does a really nice job. And at this point, they're chasing points are the Longhorns. And it goes back to Sonny Dyke's approach in this game, which was, it's something that he was not, you know, the, the uh, Horn Frogs have not been accustomed to all year long, which is, you, you know, not playing as aggressive um, and, you know, not going for it on fourth down, whether it be punt the football, not going on field goals, things like that, which sounds like a negative, but he really understood, really from the first quarter, that this game was going to be a little bit different. It was going to be a defensive battle, time of possession battle, and field position, and turns out he was exactly right. And so you get situations like this, now where the, the Horn Frogs have built that lead at 17-3, the Longhorns get in this situation, have to go for it on fourth and goal from the 10, and they come up with the, the Horn Frogs come up with a stop. And it was a great job here with the seven across uh, coverage and did a really nice job getting the stop and, of course, getting the win at 10-0. All right, Coach David Bowden breaking it down for us after the Frogs win in Austin on Saturday night. We'll preview their matchup on Saturday morning in Waco when the head coach, Sonny Dykes, continues in a moment. barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Say hello to the water of tomorrow. Richard's Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater is 100% rain. Refreshing, renewable, and the only ingredient we use in our water. Why rain? Because everyone deserves access to clean water, and rain is a 100% renewable resource available everywhere. Drink the rain. Save the planet. Shop now at richardsrainwater.com. Old Trapper Beats. Oh, One cool. upping. <laughs> I'm a big Old Trapper fan. <laughs> Not bigger than me. I love Old Trapper. I love how tender it is. Don't forget the wood smoke flavor. What about the clear bag? That shows you exactly what you're getting. Savory beef. Quality ingredients. I'm their biggest I'm fan. I'm their biggest I'm fan. Their... Old Trapper, what's your beef? The official beef jerky of the Big 12. Will you sign my bag and my tattoo? 
Welcome back into State of the Frogs now with the head coach of the Horned Frogs, Sonny Dykes, TCU, uh, ready to take on Baylor. Huge meeting coming up on uh, Saturday, 11 o'clock kick uh, down in Waco. And you, I know you already heard it doesn't matter if it's checkers or whatever. When TCU and Baylor play, it's an emotional affair. Yeah, yeah, big game for us. I mean, it's, it is. I mean, I know that uh, these games mean a little bit something special, a little something uh, more than, than, all, than most do. I know last year, too, we upset them here and kind of ruined their, their perfect season that was, that was going at the time. So, you know, they're going to have revenge on their mind, I'm sure, and, and it'll be a challenging game for us. they got a good football team, you know, built around their defense, um, and their offense is very efficient as well, doing a really good job running the ball. Offensive line is impressive, and and so you know it'll be a big challenge for us. Yeah, you talk about that defense. Dave Aranda kind of changed the mindset a little bit uh, when he got to Waco. You know, it was an offensive base thing. At least it felt that way. Uh, and now, as you mentioned, the defense they've got a real attitude over there defensively now. They do, they do. They uh, if you look at last year's NFL draft, I mean, they had a bunch of guys that ran really good times at the combine and got drafted, and and had some outstanding players on their defense last year, and you know, won the league as a result. I mean, they, they were just so much better than everybody else on defense last year in the Big 12 and lost some players. But this year, they've kind of picked up where they left off. They're still really big up front. Uh, nose tackles a load. I mean, he's a guy that you have to, 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 to deal with every single play. And you got to try to help your center some because he's just, you know, 350 pounds. And, and so, you know, they're, they're, they're a good defense, got a great scheme. You know, they play hard, they're well coached. And, and uh, do a nice job taking uh, easy stuff away from you. Six and four on the year, and it's kind of like what we've seen throughout the Big 12. They've had some really good games and then some games where I know they were disappointed too. Yeah, yeah, probably disappointed with the way they played last week at Kansas yeah. State, but then played so well at Texas Tech the week before that. And so, you know, this league is really good. I mean, everybody's, everybody's um, about the same. There's not a ton of, of difference between teams, and you have to play your best football to have a chance to win. And, um, you know, they, they had a great win at, at Oklahoma. Uh, and Oklahoma at that, at that time, I think, was starting to surge a little bit, and, and they went into Norman and beat those guys. So very, very good football team, um, very efficient on offense, make very few mistakes, don't get a lot of penalties, play disciplined, and, and uh, just kind of a winning brand of football. Speaking of the Big 12, guess what? they got a good running back, too. Richard Reese, 13 touchdowns on the year. Yeah, yeah, young kid, and he's really uh, starting to, to come into his own. And, mm -hmm. you know, does a great job. He's a one-cut back, you know, just kind of sees things, sticks his toe in the ground and goes. And, uh, they've done a really nice job, and again, it, it really begins up front for them. You know, they're a team that's built on, on the line of scrimmage on both sides, both offense and defense, and uh, really good offensive line, big guys, and, and they like to knock you around. Yeah, you talked about them being efficient. Blake Shapin is at a quarterback. They don't ask him to do a ton, but he completes like 66% of his passes. He does, yeah. Great decision maker, gets the ball out on time, you know, throws it to the right guys. Uh, they've got speed at wide receiver. You know, it seems like that's something Baylor's always yeah. had. Uh, traditionally, is guys outside that can run and, you know, and, and some tight ends that can, can play as well. Yeah. How do you, uh, it, with it being Baylor, I, I'm assuming this is not an issue, but you come off that big emotional win Saturday night uh, against Texas this week now. Do you have to do anything different, extra to keep everyone? You know, up? I don't think so. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's a long season. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's been a grind. You know, we've played, um, you know, I think nine consecutive weeks now or eight consecutive weeks. This will be our ninth uh, without an open date. And so, you know, our guys are in the grind. What we're trying to do is figure out ways to give them a little bit of a break. Uh, we gave them Sunday off last week and yesterday as well, uh, just to allow them to recharge their battery a little bit. But, uh, you know, it's, it's that time of year, and you've got to generate your own enthusiasm. And the great thing is, obviously, we're playing for a lot mm -hmm. uh, still right now. I think everybody knows kind of what's what's there and, and that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And we just got to keep fighting and, and working to, to try to get there. So I think our guys will be excited to practice. They have been all year. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of their mentality and the way they approach uh, approach preparation, and it's going to be an important week for us. All right, 11 o'clock on Saturday. Best of luck. Okay, thank you. Appreciate there it. There he goes. Sonny Dykes, head coach of the Horned Frogs. Another edition of State of the Frogs here from Coach Dykes' office. We'll be back next week. Highlights of the Frogs and the Baylor Bears all right here on State of the Frogs. Until then, have yourself a great week. Roxo Media House.